Chapter. I had a few moments before kickoff to take it all in. Kyle stood beside me, inside the center circle. Richie was on the right wing, Gallo on the left. The stadium lights at Montclair State University rained down on the soccer field. The stands bulged with more than a thousand spectators. One was my mom. I tried not to look in her direction, or in Annalise's. Here I was, starting striker for our ninth-ranked Milburn Millers in the Essex County Championship game against the fifth-ranked Columbia Cougars. I hope no one noticed my knee shaking. Kyle placed the ball on the center mark. Ready, he said to me, his breath fogging in the late afternoon air. Remember, it's a game like any other, Johnny. I nodded. And then he added, but a million times more important. I tried to smile without much luck. The referee motioned to the two goalies. Keepers ready? Both raised their hands. Then the referee put the whistle to his lips. He checked that both linesmen were in position. Kyle turned his back to the Columbia players and said loud enough for only me to hear. Goalie's out too far. It was vintage, Kyle. I knew exactly what to do. When the referee blew the whistle, I tapped the ball forward and started sprinting. Kyle took possession, dribbling around one Columbia player, then another. We ran stride for stride, just as we did at Christ Church, both of us charging hard, our cleats digging into the turf. An opposing midfielder came up. Kyle, I called out. The pass came. I pushed the ball back to him with the outside of my foot, threading it between two Columbia defenders. At the top of the penalty area, Kyle reached his leg back and blasted a shot. The ball careened off the shoulder of the sweeper and popped high in the air toward the goal area. I kept running full tilt. I had a chance at the ball. The goalie was coming hard, too. A collision was inevitable, but there wasn't a moment of hesitation in my body or a hint of concern in my mind. I launched myself in the air, my head hitting the ball just as the goalie crashed into me. But this time, the wind wasn't knocked out of me and my brain wasn't scrambled. I stayed on my feet and turned to see the ball skip off the top of the crossbar. There was a loud, oh, from the Milburn fans. Great job, great job, Pennyweather barked, stalking the sideline. Kyle ran over. All game, Johnny, same thing, all game. My feet were light, and they stayed that way through the 60 minutes of regulation. Whether it was the field or the crowd, or that I'd hoped for this opportunity a thousand times, something was different. For one late afternoon, I was El Matador. And just like for El Matador, my moment of glory came a few minutes into overtime. Mako stopped a Columbia attack with a brutal slide tackle, then got to his feet and pushed the ball to Brad, who started up the sideline. Kyle positioned himself at the center circle. Brad cut inside and found Kyle open for the pass. Go, Johnny, Kyle yelled. Again, I ran parallel to Kyle, knowing he would get the ball to me, and I would have to separate myself from the Columbia back line by doing something memorable. A once-in-a-lifetime chance was developing. I'd never get another, I was sure. Kyle moved the ball down the center of the field, leaving a halfback in his dust. This forced the sweeper to step up. I saw a seam in the defense. At the last possible moment, Kyle slid a diagonal pass. I cushioned the ball with my instep and directed it forward. The goalie charged out, but his effort was in vain. I knew where to put the ball. He couldn't stop me. And though it all happened in a few seconds, everything slowed down enough for me to catch the Adidas logo spinning forward on the ball and the slight hop the ball took from a divot in the field before I pulled my right foot back and stepped through. The sound of my cleat hitting the leather was sublime. It was as magnificent a shot as I had ever taken, starting low and rising. I watched. From his knees entangled with the Columbia sweeper, Kyle watched. Players on both teams watched. My mom, the St. Clairs, hundreds of people from school, our cheerleaders, Annalisa, they all watched as the ball sailed past the goalkeeper's arms into the upper corner, smacking the netting. Sudden death over time was over. Yes! Yes! I bellowed. I think I was hopping up and down, though I might have been running toward our sideline. I didn't get very far. Richie hugged me first, tackled me, really, and Brad, I think, followed. And then I was buried in a wave of elated teammates. We won! We won! Someone was shouting. Another was screaming like a banshee. You're the best, Johnny, Solomon said. 
We're the best. And then it all seemed like one loud, happy noise, and everyone on the team, starters and backups, even Mako, was in a tight knot, arms around one another, hollering at the top of our lungs that we were, in fact, Essex County champions. Kyle grabbed me by the back of my neck. He pulled me in close. Gonna party with us tonight? Yeah, I said. At the circle, Johnny, he said. A party at the circle. After we returned to Milburn High, I sat alone in a locker room. The rest of the team, after laughing and joking and giving each other high fives for some time, had gone home. I didn't want to leave just yet. I needed to sit there in my grass-stained uniform, clutching the game ball Pennyweather had awarded me on the bus ride back. On it, he had written today's date and the score. I tried to remember every bit of what had happened during the game and its delirious aftermath when Pennyweather accepted the championship trophy from the county soccer officials, then handed it to Richie, who passed it to Pete. Pennyweather wanted each of us to have a turn. When the trophy finally came to me, I held it as high as my arms possibly could. I felt like crying. I really did. Just letting the tears flow. The thrill and emotion were so unfamiliar. I'd never experienced anything like this. I got the highest grade on our AP English final last year, and I made the honor roll sophomore and junior years. But no one gives a crap about that kind of stuff. And receiving an MVP trophy in Little League, that was so long ago, I barely remembered it. But scoring the winning goal in the Essex County Tournament Finals, against Columbia no less, that was memorable. Only one person could do that. And it wasn't Mako or Richie or Gallo. And it wasn't Kyle St. Clair. It was Jonathan Fahey. I had dreamed the dream, then made it come true. My mom was bubbling over. Johnny, I'm just so incredibly proud. She must have said it a half dozen times. Everyone was cheering for you. My God, it was wonderful. Were all your games as exciting? Today was special, I said, finishing the last of a grilled cheese. I had no idea you could run like that, she said. I know you practice all the time, but I never imagined you could do all those things with a soccer ball. Darn it, why didn't I bring a camera? I'll have one for next week's game, definitely. Then she looked at me again, but this time it was like she was seeing me for the first time. You've really become a man. He would have been proud. I didn't know what to say. I wasn't sure what it meant to be a man. I didn't really know if my dad would have been proud. I waited to see if my mom would say anything more. A little clarification would have been nice. A lot would have been better. But that was all she had to say. I'm going out tonight, I said. My mom seemed surprised, but pleased. Going to celebrate? Yeah, I guess. And see Annalisa, I hoped. But I didn't tell her that. Where? Just out, I said, stepping into my shoes and grabbing my jacket from the hall closet. You'll lock up when you get home, she said. I nodded.